have seen the gates of oblivion, beyond which no waking eye may see. Welcome, friends. Today we're gonna talk about NPCs in the real world. Now before we get into it, let me just go ahead and say that all this is purely for entertainment. It's all in good fun, so let's not get it twisted. Also, for anyone that doesn't know, NPC stands for non-player character, and calling someone an NPC insinuates that there's not a ghost in the machine, like they're just a functioning body without having the agency and self-awareness of someone who's playing the game. You get the idea. Okay, so first we'll talk about the behaviors of an NPC, and how to identify them, and then we'll talk about some of the theories for where they've come from. Just like how it is in a video game, NPCs would seem to be just running a script, like all the time. You know how like when you work some kind of service job, like at a grocery store or a restaurant? You're basically running a script. You've got a number of scripted actions and responses that you're supposed to say or do in a particular order. I mean, some of these jobs are just repeating the same flowchart over and over again. And that's what it's like to run a script. It's acting. Or, it's like running a program. And it would really seem like there are a great number of people in the world that are doing that all the time. And not just at their job. I mean like real NPCs don't have the ability to assimilate new information. They can't think critically or creatively. Like not even a little bit. And it's not like they're low functioning either. It's more like they're missing a certain capacity. You ever meet someone that just has like the same handful of things that they say on a rotation? Such as people that only speak when someone else engages them first. And also, just like in a video game, you can exhaust their dialogue by spamming OK. Just tell them OK about five times in a row and they'll stop talking. Just be careful not to hit OK one extra time than necessary or else they'll repeat themselves all over again. They also seem to repeat those same one or two lines to basically everyone they encounter. And they just pretty much only respond. And not just in the context of dialogue either. But they only respond to the world in the same way that animals do. Only ever performing any action because the situation calls for it. And not seeming to execute any kind of free will. Like never doing anything because they just want to because they can't think critically to be able to perform an action or handle a situation differently than they've already been programmed to do. And it's like you can't help these people because they can't assimilate new information. So try as you might, but you'll never be able to teach an NPC something new. Unless you're their handler, and you're the one writing the program, only mods and GMs can alter the NPC's behaviors. And so, because they can't assimilate new information, and in the same vein of not being able to teach them stuff, NPCs are incapable of learning new ideas or concepts that would raise their consciousness. You know how, like, when you learn or discover something that allows you to see or think about stuff in a new way? NPCs can't do that. They don't have an inner dialogue. So like in the way how while you're watching this, you're having your own thoughts about what I'm saying, you might be thinking in your own head stuff like, Oh yeah, I've noticed that before. Or, I don't know how I feel about that. I disagree with that. But those words that you hear in your own head that represent your own thoughts is your inner dialogue. And if you really needed to think about something, you could essentially have a conversation with yourself to figure something out. And NPCs can't do that. They just don't have any sort of inner dialogue at all. But also, everybody has a different neurotyping. And it's a sliding scale. Everyone is more or less lexical than each other. Some people think more lexically, and others think more emotionally. And this neurotyping is wholly separated and unrelated to intelligence. But to not have any kind of inner dialogue at all is a telltale sign of an NPC. Now, when it comes to symptoms, having a symptom or even a number of symptoms doesn't necessarily mean that a person is or has whatever it is. Like, when it comes to sicknesses, there's this handful of symptoms that all seem to be associated with basically every disease. So you can't just call someone an NPC because they've got symptoms of it. But you will wonder. And also, one symptom is just a single point on a graph. But, if someone checks enough boxes, you might just be dealing with an NPC. 
Like you ever say something to someone that challenges their worldview, and they just give you a stare as if they needed to reboot? You can only ever ask an NPC questions that they are predisposed to answer. If they don't have a pre-programmed response for something, it's like they just freeze up and don't know what to do. Uh, it's been a heck of a ride, to be honest. Um, I really can't complain. Um, yeah, I was kind of, uh, I was a little down. I, I, I found out I was injured and I had to have surgery again. I have to You ever been in public, and someone is just being really difficult because they can't be a human being and think outside of their box for even a second? And for you it might be a really obvious situation that could easily be resolved, but they're just not programmed to be able to do that, so it's not going to happen. Another symptom of being an NPC is to not have any dreams ever. Now dreams are quite fleeting, and a lot of people have dreams and just quickly forget about them as they fully wake up. But NPCs never dream at all, never ever, not never. Another symptom of someone being an NPC could only be observed if you're in a relationship with them. An NPC in a relationship will never say something like, I love you, unless you had said it first and they're saying it as a reaction. Or maybe they never reach out for physical contact unless you do it first. And I don't just mean rarely, because some people are just really withdrawn, I mean like never. If you are in a relationship with someone where you can only ever have an interaction with them if you're the one who initiates it, then you just might be dealing with an NPC. But also, everybody is different, and any symptoms like this could also just be a part of someone's personality. But also, if you're dealing with someone who can only mirror emotions, then if they're not an NPC, they might be something far worse you may not be safe. Okay, so let's talk about programming for a bit. So people don't start developing any kind of critical analysis until around the age of seven or eight. And it comes in very slowly, developing just a little bit at a time. So all young children are just running a program, and that program is everything that they've observed from their environment thus far. And children don't stop being programmed at any particular age either. It's a gradual process. Now, the prefrontal cortex is the part of the brain that's responsible for critical thought. It also doesn't finish developing until about age 25. And children can't think critically because they also just physically can't. Also, in a similar vein, young children also cannot lie. They physically can't lie because they simply don't have the capacity to do so. It also isn't natural to lie. Whenever someone tells a lie, their skin resistance changes, blood pressure changes, heart rate goes up, a whole bunch of stuff. It's naturally very uncomfortable to tell a lie, and that's why you can monitor someone's vitals to see if they're lying. So lying isn't natural, you have to learn how to lie. And even more so, you have to learn how to lie comfortably, if you even can. Unless you're a sociopath, and then it's easy. But I don't think that NPCs can tell a lie because it requires critical thought. You see, lying is also managed by the prefrontal cortex, and there's a certain amount of planning and cunning that's required to tell a lie. And an NPC just can't do any of that. Now everyone gets programmed as they grow up, and as adults, we've developed our critical analysis, and we can start to become self-aware of our programming and start to unravel it, and sort of decide what stays and what goes. Depends on how self-aware you are and everyone develops at different rates. But an NPC never becomes self-aware ever. Zero self-awareness, even as a fully developed adult. Now, there are also a lot of people that are just programmed wrong. I mean, it's really sad, and it happens a lot. Children get abused and neglected all the time, and the effects of growing up with bad programs can be lifelong. So you might at first think that you're dealing with an NPC, but maybe they've just been programmed wrong. I mean, everybody's got something different about them. Just because somebody has a particular quirk doesn't make them an NPC. A quirk that I've noticed in someone that's very close to me is that they never ever not never put anything back where it goes after they're done with it. Nothing has a home. Everything gets left exactly where it is 
exactly the way it is just as soon as they're done with it. Everything gets left open. Everything gets left out. And helping them look for stuff always leads to the same conversation, but they're just not self-aware enough to understand what they're doing. I don't think they're an NPC. But they might be. But they do, however, have this bad program that they may never overcome. Okay, so let's talk about how non-player characters could even possibly exist in the real world. Well, the first theory is also the easiest. What if there are no NPCs? What if no one is an NPC? And it only seems like certain people are NPCs because they're missing certain capacities. Or like they've got some kind of really ignorant quirk. Like maybe they've grown up in and have come from a really unfortunate place. Or maybe they're just not very lexical. And in the context of intelligence, it can be a really hard pill to swallow when it comes to the cognitive capacity for people of average intelligence. Like most people are pretty dumb. And the distribution of IQ is a bell curve. Only about 16% of people are above 115. And the difference in people's abilities between each margin is more and more as you get further away from the average. So when you're a lot higher functioning than some stranger that you have to deal with in public, it can really feel like there's something wrong with them. But actually, they're normal, and you're the exception. And another thing is that people who enjoy video games tend to have higher intelligence. Like, people with high and above average intelligence are overrepresented in the video game community. And video games is also where we get the metaphor for an NPC. NPC is video game jargon. So the first theory is that there are no NPCs, and we just perceive some people that way. Okay, so the next theory is that our world is a simulation, like the whole Matrix thing. Whether it's a computer program or a holographic universe, or even if the world was created by a higher power. However it may have happened, if the world wasn't formed by a natural process, and if it was created with any kind of intelligent design, then that would make our world a simulation. And if the world were a simulation of any kind, how would you even know who is and who isn't an NPC? I mean, what if you're the only one here, and everyone else is just here to fill space? You would have no way to ever discern that. You can only confirm that you yourself aren't an NPC. And even then, what even are you? How do you know anything? Okay, so the last theory goes crazy. So what if, some time ago, humans were being cloned? And the clones don't receive a spirit, as it were. So cloning a person creates a functioning body, but it's missing the essence of human capacity like the only thing that separates us from the animals. Now, where this theory comes from is this interest in the bizarre and fantastical world of the 1800s. Anything that happened in the 1800s might as well be science fiction. It's like this magical fantasy land where anything was possible. So the story goes that people were cloned and grown in incubators. And these children were known as the incubator babies. And one of the reasons for this was to repopulate a destroyed and empty world following the mud flood. And then all of these clone babies were raised in orphanages in a world that was primarily inhabited by children. And then after being fully programmed and reaching the proper working age of eight, the clone children were shipped all around on these trains now known as the orphan trains, so that they could occupy and maintain all the factories and such. Now let's just entertain this idea for a bit. So the clones would grow up and marry and go on to make entire clone families. But like, what would happen if a fully natural human married a clone and then they had children together? Would it be like 50-50 for whether the children are fully human or not? But also like, after generations of that, you could have mostly entire NPC families with only like one or a few handful of fully natural humans somewhere in their ancestry, so that they can carry the genes of human capacity, but not express them in themselves. Which could explain the occasional black sheep of some NPC families. Where you got the one and only person from an entire family that's actually self-aware. The other theory about the clones 
is that they're designed to be host bodies for the evil Nephilim spirits when that time finally comes. Which goes along with the idea that NPCs don't have a ghost in their machine. But what do you think? 